Hi! Welcome back to the channel, and this week we are going to be discussing Tail Chaser Song by Tad Williams. Um, when I first read this book, I was kind of confused, and it took me a couple of tries to actually get into it, just because it is rather unusual, and similarly to Watership Down, the cats and other animals in this book have their own words for things, and uh, odd rituals, and societal norms, and cultural things that are quite different from what you would normally read about in, in a book about cats. <laughs> um, but once I actually got into this book, I really started to enjoy it. I, I have always been a big fan of books that are more animal-centric, and I think I made that rather clear in my video about the Book of the Dun Cow. If you haven't seen that, please go watch it, uh, if you want. <laughs> Um, but I love books that have very strongly animal-centric worlds. And so uh, Tales Chaser's Song is more in the veins of um, Watership Down or The Plague Dogs, where the animals are definitely absolutely the center of the world building, but there are still humans in, mixed in with them which is different from the Book of the Dun Cow, which does not have humans in it at all. So, uh, if you're looking for an interesting book that isn't quite as structured as the Redwall books, but still has its own, like, charm, I definitely recommend Kale Chaser's Song. Um, for this one, I think I'm going to read the inside cover, just so that you can kind of get a little more of what the, the book's about, because this is one that's not exactly easy to explain unless the other person has something of a base for what the plot is. So, here we go. Meet Fritty Chail Chaser, a ginger tomcat of rare courage and curiosity, of loyalty and determination, of intelligence and integrity, a born survivor in a world of heroes and villains, of powerful feline gods and whispery legends about those strange, furless, erect creatures called men. Trouble has cast its shadow over the whole cat community, as cats have begun vanishing mysteriously, never to be seen or heard of again. As fear and anger spread, Fritty tries to rouse the fleet, fee, little, little, golly, the feline clan to action. Then his own cat friend Hushpad, she of the silky fur and long whiskers, disappears, and Fritty can wait no longer. Along with an eccentric, grizzled old tomcat named Eatbugs, and the over-energetic kitten Pouncequick. Fritty abandons his home territory and sets out on a dangerous and magical quest to rescue Hushpad, a quest that will take him all the way to Cat Hill and beyond. So this is definitely a rescue adventure novel where uh, one of the characters, Hushpad, goes missing and Tail Chasers, along with his little posse of eat bugs and pounce quick decide to see if they can go and find her and they run into a variety of obstacles along the way from being attacked by squirrels and captured by humans to some weird hybrid creatures that shouldn't exist um and as it says it takes them into cat hell and beyond, and there are a couple of parts in this that are a little bit disturbing, where it's like, oh my gosh, there are cats literally just starving to death and then being disemboweled by the hybrid guards and being eaten. Uh, 
when they can't work anymore. Yeah, that that that, that makes it gets a little gross. But it, it doesn't last long and it's definitely not like a focus. I would not say that this is a gory or grisly book. There are just parts of it that are. So be aware of that when you read this because it might catch you a little bit off guard after some of the cuter bits with Pounds Quick, who is a kitten, and some of the more like goofy bits with Eat Bugs, who seems to be an old cat who's getting a little bit senile at times. <laughs> and also the parts with the squirrels or the rick as they call themselves. And like I was saying earlier, there's a lot of made up language. And so the cats call themselves Fila, the squirrels call themselves the rick chick and on and on like that. And they have names for humans and cars and all that kind of stuff. It's, it, <laughs> it's a little weird, but it shows a lot of creativity and Tad Williams actually does a really good job of being able to explore the world that he made without lingering over long on certain points, which is the downfall of certain authors. I'm talking about you, J.R.R. Tolkien, even though I love you. Um, but it's very good. It's, um, feral domestic cats on an adventure <laughs> to save each other. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you've read this, what was your impression of it? Because, like I said, it did take me a little bit of time to be able to actually get into it and enjoy it. I had to reread the first bit a couple of times before I could get going with this book. And, um, there are still parts of it where I'm like, hmm, hmm, it's weird. But yeah, uh, comment, comment what you thought. Comment the weirdest part for you. And if I get enough comments, I'll let you know which was the weirdest part for me. Um, anyway, if you decide to read this book, I hope you enjoy it. Um... Is there anything else of Tad Williams that you've read? Because this is the only book of his that I've read. Anyway, <laughs> let me know and uh, I hope you have a really good day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!